Well, it's good to see you out tonight, knowing that it has been a long weekend. As a matter of fact, it is a long weekend. And times like this, you know, some of God's people take a holiday. But how many of you know there is no public holiday with God? No, he's never, ever taking a holiday. 24-7, he's always on the job. Hallelujah. Well, tonight we have our brother Glenn Roy coming to minister to us. So let's put our hands together and welcome him. is good and his mercies endure forever wonderful lord wonderful savior father we thank you today for your goodness for your love for your grace that the bond towards us lord we thank you we thank you lord that you have chosen us we thank you lord that you're working in your our lives both to will and to do of your good pleasure we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house, to worship you, Lord, and to do your service through the ministry of the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the awesome privilege, Lord, for only eternal life. Eternal life abounds, O oh God, through the ministry of your word, through the preaching of your word, through the acceptance of your word, for you are the hope of all mankind the hope of all your people. And so tonight I pray, Father, that as your word go forth, that you, O oh God, will speak to the hearts of your people and that, Lord, we will understand and will come and that we will grow, Lord, wiser in you, that we would, we, we would yield ourselves to the full obedience of your word, that that change and transformation that we desire will come to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 5. A reading from verses 1 to 11. St. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I would let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and, they and filled both ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me. 
For I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the drought of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Verse 11. And when they had brought their ship to land, they forsook all and followed him. Amen? This miracle of the drought of fishes, many of us are familiar with. I have ministered from it on a couple of occasions. And the Lord wants me to visit this text again, to minister a little differently. Tonight, the Lord wants to speak to us about our deliverance. And the title of the message is Deliverance Through Obedience. The title of the message is Deliverance Through Obedience. What the Lord wants us all to know, each and every one of us, is that your deliverance turns on your obedience. So we're going to examine the text to see how we will develop this theme from it. Many people spend most, if not all of their lives, desiring to be set free from some form of bondage, oppression, hardship, burden, infirmity, worry, trouble, whatever name you want to call it. Many persons, many people, and I would dare say every one of us, are burdened and troubled in our lives by something or the other. And we yearn to set free, to be set free. Some obtain such freedom, others don't, or achieve such freedom. Many Christians, though, also have similar experiences. And I must dare say this should really apply to Christians, the, 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 the former statement. Because the people in the world are in darkness, they are blinded, like as we once were. Walking about through the ignorance that was in us and just following the dictates of our own minds. And we were alienated from God. So clearly we were in bondage. So once you are not a Christian, you are in bondage. But to the people of God who are, have come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, many of us yet find ourselves in this situation. And God knows what we have need of. So he's sending his word to remind us of his love, what he has done, and how we can be set free from this monkey on our back, if we would care to use that terminology. Whether it may be in a relationship, it may be in your health, it may be in your financial circumstances that have been continually palace and you, and you have been having to eke out just a meager living and things have been hard. You're living in situations that are not convenient and, and things are truly hard. God knows it. And the word today is coming by the love of God to show you he cares not only for your spiritual needs, but for all of you. For he, you are his. He has purchased you with a price. The price of his very life. He has paid dearly for you. So he wouldn't see about your spiritual and leave off your physical. Not so? Because if you have life, the spirit depends on the body, the physical body, to continue its existence in this earth. So there is no thinking, well, yes, I know God will bless me in heaven, 
but I had to eke it out down here by myself. No, that is not the state of a Christian. Amen? Amen? Yeah, we should be happy about that because we know now that our God cares for everything concerning us. Jesus Christ came and paid the price for our freedom and our deliverance. Jesus came and paid the price for our freedom and our deliverance. That price has been paid. In other words, if you pay it, then you purchase it from someone. If I paid Kenneth for his car, it stands to reason that I have purchased that car from Kenneth. So if I see him going with a spare key the following day, okay, leave that alone. He triumphed victoriously over every circumstance of man. Listen carefully to these opening remarks. Jesus triumphed victoriously over every circumstance of man and gave that freedom to all who will accept and obey him. It's important to understand this. When we peruse the Gospels and we read of the miracles of Jesus and we read of all his wonderful works and we consider the cross and the resurrection and all that has been said of him, he, there is not a situation that Jesus has not triumphed over. I know you're looking at me and you feel he didn't have yours to deal with. There is not a circumstance that Jesus did not triumph over. There is not a problem that was brought to Jesus that he did not deal with. Jesus Christ is the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among men and demonstrated its power over all things. This is the word of God. This is the truth. And if you know there is something that it has not demonstrated its power over, hold on. You are being deceived. Man's freedom and hence deliverance is therefore to be found in Jesus. In obedience to the word of God. I know, I know you guys are looking at me, do you all want something deep? But there is nothing more profound than what is being said here tonight. You say to me, Brother Glenroy, you saying my obedience will set me free? Your obedience to Christ will set you free. That is what the message is tonight. And if you are already, and I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, whatever your situation, he's saying, just obey. You will be set free. I am the word of, not me, Jesus, is the word of God. And I have triumphed over every circumstance. I came, I prove it. I paid for your salvation. And now I give you the victory. It is through accepting him and through obedience that we have the victory. You will say to me, the Brooklyn, but I've accepted Jesus and I'm having this problem, I'm having that problem. Note well I say acceptance and obedience. As, the, as this word comes forth, saints, we need to search our hearts and be true to ourselves 
And I'm very sure the Holy Spirit will show us areas in which we have not surrendered. We have not been obedient. And, I've, and as a result, we continue to wrestle and grapple with situations and problems that we want to go away. We want, to, we want it to be prayed away. We want something to happen. We want a miracle. We sow in seed for, for a harvest. But it turns at our obedience. So man's freedom and hence his deliverance is therefore to be found in Jesus in obedience to the word of God. For whom the Son of Man set free is free indeed. Amen? Let us now look at our text. We saw that Jesus Christ was preaching on the Sea of Genesaret. We realized that there were a lot of people pressing him. Plenty of people came to church that day. It wasn't a night like tonight. But thank God this message is for who? Those of us who hear. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So being pressed, Jesus wanted a vantage point. So he got up in one of the boats and he asked the guy to push off. Simon, push off a little bit. And he started to speak to them and minister to them from the boat. And everything started when he was finished. When he was finished speaking, he taught the people. When Jesus was finished speaking, <coughs> excuse me, he turned to Simon. And he gave him a command. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draught. Now, there are many beautiful things that can be developed from this text. But one that I would like to jump into immediately here is to show you how very gracious our Lord is. Very, very gracious. God is wonderful. I mean, Jesus used the man boat. <laughs> the man was a fisherman. So having so graciously accepted the use of the boat, he now wants to reward him. You know, like some people <laughs> do things for them and they're they gone. <laughs> yes. No, you didn't see that, yeah? Jesus didn't finish and say, okay, Sayo, <laughs> meet Mob in Galilee. <laughs> He said, all right, thank you, thank you. Now I want you to launch out into the deep. So that was the word of God to Simon. That was the command that Jesus gave. Now the command of God to us normally follows some remonstrations from us. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. When I say remonstration, we always argue with God. We always find it not, well, it's not so, you know, and Satan who is there interjecting these thoughts into us always makes us feel, well, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not really that, you know, but, um, you know, just like what he did in the at the beginning. There's nothing original with him. When he went to Eve, he tell God, he said, did God really mean that? You wouldn't really die, you know. I don't know why you say really die or not die. You die, die. <laughs> you understand? Know if you're going to, I don't know the difference between die and really die. <laughs> Anyone knows? Gee, God said you would die. Satan said really die. <laughs> so this is what this world has done. And this is what he has done. He has always given you a different look, a different take on the command of God. But the word to Peter was launch out. Hear Peter's remonstrations or his protestations. We, listen, hold on, Jesus. I know you preach well to them fellas, but listen, it's whole night we toil here. It's whole night we toil here. And we have caught nothing. Those waters there are all fished out. We fishermen, since we with my father so. Those were his protestations. What are ours when God talks to us? And me doing that. 
Wives obey husband, not me. There, is, there are always protestations. It's a fact. I too. The, the word is first. He preached it up to me in five grace God before I came down here. We always have something about the word. And you know, I was meditating on this and the Holy Spirit said to me, you know, God even understands that. For he knows how infinitely less <laughs> than him we are. <laughs> how very feeble we are. And how blind we are. So he understands it. Plus, we have had this sinful nature that have been averse to everything is God. So, you know, as Paul said in the book of Acts, you know, at such times when we start to protest and remonstrate, God winks. <laughs> Lame. You had to come back and eat it. Come like long time, your parents cook um. I didn't like um. Well, you just think Quaker oats. I, I had to get a big man before I could like Quaker oats. I, I like corn, porridge, rice, tea, you name it. But you see, Quaker oats and this thing called sago, it can't go down by me at all. Except after. What do you mean except after, Glenroy? My mother put it out on the cup. I saw there crying, long snack. She said, when he finished, he go eat it. When he finished, he ate it. There was nothing else to eat. <laughs> That's the only how it will go down. <laughs> so I, I want to believe that Almighty God does something like that with us, you know. He understands, and he really understands our frailty. So, you know, you could be a little comfortable if at first you doubted, or at first you... You, you were hesitant. I, 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 I want to say this. I say this because I believe I have the Spirit of God. And, and I'm saying that you should doubt God or you should always re, um, 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 protest the Word of God. But when it comes to us, it, is, it, it comes to us and it doesn't line up with what we want. It doesn't line up with what we want, but God knows what we want. When do you know... When, when did you begin to know when you, uh, what you want? That is something. It takes a lot of humility to get to that point. You know what? I really thought I needed this. You know, sometimes most of our prayers are not answered. Why? Because they spring from the first knee-jerk reaction. We hear they will lay off. Oh, God, I need a job. Oh, you ain't, you're not getting lay off, eh? You only hear lay off taking on. You start a... You know, and you start a prayer, but the Lord said, it's it not for you. Sometimes we, we end up drinking bush tea for other people's fever, you know? And another request, out of, out of inexperience, out of anxiety, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. You put in an application, and you're telling the whole church, pray for my brother, pray for our application. Pray for, leave the application, just pray and thanksgiving. Make to God. No, no. This is the command. The first part of the verse is be anxious for nothing. You end, get it. You end, get it. You get it. Praise the Lord. Well, we just sang the song. Our hope is in God. Not in the thing that we see that we might get or need. That, that one may have to pass us like a bus. That one had a pass. That full. You can't get that one. And you wait. And God who has purchased our salvation is working his purpose in our lives. Now, let us... So, we have dealt with Peter's protestations. What is interesting to know about this text and about Peter is that he acquiesced, or he agreed, to God in obedience. He subsequently agreed. And that is the power of that word, or what transpired in his life. That despite his thinking, and even telling it to God, that the sea out there don't have no fish, he said, nevertheless, Lord, 
at thy word. Tonight, if you and I will say, Lord, nevertheless, it's your word. If we will so honor God and obey him, we will get our drought of fishes. Our net will break. We'll have to seek help. A simple message, nothing too difficult. It's, it was Labor Day and now it's um, Corpus Christi. Simple message. Nothing to work out. Any, anybody had anything to work out? Any? We, we could close now. <laughs> simple message. Because until you and I obey the word of God, our circumstance will not change. Note something. After Peter tells Jesus all about how to fish <laughs> and where fish is, the commandment never changed. And Jesus never uttered it again. You read it. He said, Lord, etc., etc., et et Jesus didn't take back the commandment. And this is something for us, that point if we get it, we should realize that the command of God is working in our lives for our good. If you get nothing else, get that. No, you won't see it. I ain't see it. You won't like it. Who tell you I like it? But it is working. You know why? Because God said it. We cannot we cannot pretend or presume to give God honor and disregard his word. It's it, it not possible. The two can't reconcile. I don't care how much you put up your hand and say, I honor you, Father, etc. You cannot do that and, and dishonor his word or disobey his word. And God is good. The, the God of our salvation. He's good. He's wonderful. His purpose is perfect. He knows. He doesn't tell us things to make us lose out on anything. It's the devil who makes us believe that this thing is going to make us lose out on something else that apparently is looking okay. I have time to develop that. I think that's self-explanatory. So we have here Peter agreed when he said... Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let it down. Let's jump quickly and go and see what was the reward. We're going through the parable. Not, believe me, there are, so, there are so much gems I have written down here. Can't preach them all tonight. Stick into what we are going to deal with. The reward of obedience. Let us look at the reward of obedience. Note well that in verse 5, in verse 6, when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes that their net break. The reward of obedience. What did not happen by their contrivance by their efforts or by their industry occurred by the obedience of the word of God. Kenneth, you could say amen again. <laughs> you see, all night they contrived to catch fish. There were people who knew how to do that, but it didn't happen. But it happened when Jesus said so, it happened by the, the obedience to the word of God. Self-explanatory. I, I won't spend time developing it. We must do our duty. We must do our part in obeying God. And leave the result to him. Very often we try to anticipate the result. When it shall happen or which shall happen. You know... The husbandman, the word of God says, has long patience.
patience, waiting for the fruit, waiting for the former and the latter rain. He has sown the seed, yes, but he has to wait until the plant is grown. And he has to wait until the plant has budded. And he has to wait until they put forth the young. And he cannot pick the fruit yet because it is too young. He has to wait a little more time until it gets full. Not so? so in the process, he's doing something. He's taking away the weeds, taking care of the bugs and so on. Not so? He's doing something. But he's waiting. And this is analogous for us when we pray. We have placed our requests before God. Jesus Christ said to us in the parable of the unjust judge, he said, listen, and would not God revenge his elect surely or quickly, though he tarry with them, though he wait, though they wait on him, wouldn't he, re if the unjust judge So we must put, do our duty of obedience and allow God to give us our miracle. Amen? Remember the word of God says, without faith it is impossible to please God, for he who cometh to God must believe that he is, is the reward of they who diligently seek him. Remember in the book of Hebrews, in the Hall of Fame, there were so many that after they have done the will of God, cast not away your confidence, says the word of God. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will, you would receive the promise. But we Trinidadian, well, I go do it. Well, if I again, I go do it. You know, so like, you do it today, you want to see it tomorrow. And many times that type of attitude will not bear result in our lives. Why? Because if, if God responds to us like that, our only response to God is because of what we get and we will never love God. We will have no love for God. We only have love for what we want. Go and ask him and we know we get in it tomorrow because the thing will kill. When, <laughs> you know, it's almost like a scratch. Buy him a thing and a scratch and you collect the money one time. Okay, I, I, I hear about I, I hear about that. I, I cannot look at me as well. <laughs> All right. Now note well what happened also. That the thing that they wanted, fishes, what they desired, fishes, what they toiled all night for, fishes, came on the obedience of the word of God. And it didn't only come just so. They had an uncommon success. They had uncommon success. I mean, two shipload. When the nets started to break, so they say, oh, it started to break because when they started to pull up fish, they had so much fish that they started to tear. So they see all, all of the bottom is fish. So they call the next boat. By the time they start to offload and they fully up, fully up, both boats start to go down. Do you understand that? At the obedience of the word of God. Remember, they testify. Their protestations, or Peter's protestation to Jesus, is a testimony that there was no fish there. Come on. That, that is the value of his, his protesting. There was no fish there. That is why at the end, Peter said, oh God, depart from me. Not that he didn't want Jesus, but he was so fearful. Of his, he saw his sin now. When he saw how awesome the word of God was manifested, he said, oh God, Lord, I'm a sinful man, so don't let anything happen to me. This is why he was saying, depart from me. He wasn't just running Jesus because he didn't want Jesus on his boat. Okay. Let's look at the fourth point. All our success saints is contained in the word of God. You can be diligent in business and still come up short. But you cannot be diligent in the word and come up short. And the whole church should say amen, amen. If you believe it. You could be diligent in business. 
I know experienced businessmen, investors, invest in projects, and it, it, not this, boss. In nothing, that's just life. I don't have time to quote the scripture, uh, 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 Ecclesiastes 9.11. The race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, nor bread to, bread to the, 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 the wise, nor favor and skill to men of knowledge, but time and chance happen to them all. So not because a guy come up and hear money, well, that's what we think in the world. He must succeed if he tells you how many things fail. So our success is in the word of God. And this is what was demonstrated with this parable of the drought of the fishes. Let me move on to conclude. I touched on the graciousness of God already. I touched on it. Jesus rewarded Peter with a miraculous catch of fishes. Uncommon success for his kindness for the youth of the boat. And obedience in response to his command to launch out and let down. That is, in a nutshell, is what this parable dealt with and what we will deal with tonight. He rewarded him. God will reward us at our obedience to his word. He's there. He wants to reward us. And many times, we have served the Lord. We have done service in the house of the Lord. It's unto God. And we tend to give up halfway. But what says the word of God? Be not weary in well-doing. For in due time, you will reap if you faint not. Which means many of us who have started off well, like the Galatians, we could end up being discouraged for what reason or the other and faint and lose out. What I'm saying is that it is sure, as Pastor opened tonight and said, that this hope is not a maybe hope. This is a bong to must hope. It is sure. It's just that the vision will speak. Wait for it. Though it tarry, it will speak. Your obedience, my obedience to God, will bear the fruit in our lives. It is bound to bear the fruit in our lives. For God, that's why God desires it to bear fruit in our lives. So that you will be blessed. So that you will be happy. So that you will smile. And all you have to do is obey God. We, many times, have done business in the world and have not met with success. We will even tend to blame God for that and all. So, some people blame God for everything. They have had no regard to him. They tried their own way. But we always look at other people, what, how, how it turned out for somebody else. And God is so aware of that, he said to us, don't fret yourself. Fret not yourself. Wait patiently for him. For God is working in us, even while the answer to our circumstance remains pending. God is working to create in us that peaceable fruit of righteousness. To create in us that sense of holiness and righteousness that is needed in his people. Remember, he chose us. We are sitting down here, not because we are the goodest, if I should call a word, the goodest of all people, but we are sitting here because he has chosen us. And how he has chosen us is to perform his will in our lives. Amen? So we conclude. So just as Jesus Christ gave rest to Peter and them, because 
They had toiled all night and they weren't going to go and rest, but they didn't. They didn't. They were in church. They were listening to Jesus preach. Right? You, know, you notice that. All night they toil, they toil, but they were on top of the boat. <laughs> they were on top of the boat listening to Jesus preach. And Jesus gave them rest. You know why? They attended to his business. They lent him the boat. Peter guy said, listen, whole night I was, I was toiling. I go in and sleep, take some drink, and I can rest because whole night I work. I said, yes. Peter didn't say so. And as a result, God recognized his great, in his graciousness and he rewarded him. And if you in those days saw two of the ships full with fish, there's no way that fish finishing by the following day. Man, they're selling fish in, in, in Galilee, in, 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 in Capernaum, fish all over that day. So they had time to rest. They probably didn't go out the same night or the, or, or the fall. They had time to rest. What the point I'm making is sometimes in our physical labor, we think we, think we have to, we must hold on two jobs. We must burn. We're trying to make it by all needs. Jesus Christ is saying, come unto me. All you are labored and heavy laden. Let me give you rest. Let me show you that man does not live by bread alone. But you see the word that's come out of my mouth? That is how man lives. That is the high regard that we need to give to the word of God in our circumstances for our deliverance. The multitude of fishes, a record catch that sang to boats, surely sufficed for many days. Question is, what would you find rest from today? What is your problem? What is your burden? What is your difficulty? We have demonstrated that there is nothing that Jesus cannot do. We have proven his love in that he has chosen us and paid for us and called us. Tonight, whatever is our need, let us come to Christ. Let us find rest in him. Let us come say, Lord, I, I, I gave it to you the last time, but I tried to hold on a piece of it. I come back to give you the other part tonight. Let us give the problem over to God. Let us stop fighting in ourselves. Let us learn to resign and give it to God. It's a scary thing. The Lord has been a certain matter in my life in this position, and I'm telling you, every morning I wake up, I say, okay, Lord, I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> but he's teaching me to let go. Letting go is not easy. For a man who has been in charge all the time, letting go is not easy. But he doesn't want me in conflict. He doesn't want me other than to show his love. And I can't keep fighting and showing the love of God, can I? He said, let go. So I make sure, when I pray, I say, Lord, I let this go, but it's in your hand, Lord. <laughs> No, I mean, please understand. The preacher is faced with similar circumstance. But I am convinced. There's no doubt in my mind. If there is a doubt that maybe this might work, I would have somewhat to say. There is no doubt in my mind. But I thank God for his word. I thank him for his spirit. I thank God for the continuous sending of the word. That is to remind us, you just have to do that and I will do the rest. Amen? Tonight, whatever is your problem, whatever is your need, let us pray. Let us take it up to God. Let us just resign to trust him and obey him. He has never failed and he will never fail us. Amen? Let's stand over. So as the choir sings, whatever is your need, you need prayer for strengthening, you need prayer for healing, you need prayer to help with your disobedience, you need prayer.
come and let us undergo you in prayer the altar tonight. That is the purpose of the night service. It's the purpose by which we minister the word. Just come. Believe in God. Come to surrender again. Hallelujah. As the choir sings. Praise you.
who wanted to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Ma'am, would you come? You? She? she? Yeah. Now, if there's anyone else here who have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, before we close the service, we would like to give you an opportunity. Just a moment. You mean you're saying that you okay? Just one minute. Let me make a point. If there's anyone else here who would like to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you have heard the word. Your deliverance from sin, your deliverance from the bondage of death, your deliverance from eternal damnation, turns at obedience to the word of God. Tonight, I would give you, like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If even there's one person here beside this young lady, anyone else, you want to accept Jesus tonight, it's a wonderful opportunity. If you'll just lift your hands, I would lead you in a prayer that will make the difference between life and death. So if you would lift your hands, if you'd so desire to receive Jesus, if there's one person on the left, on the right, in the balcony, if there's anyone, you know you are not made it right with God. If you should pass away tonight, you go to a lost eternity. This is an opportunity to make it right. He will forgive your sins. And he would give you life eternal. There is one. Is there another person? Is there anyone else? Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else who would make that decision? It is the best decision you can ever make to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Forget what religion has taught you. It's only in Christ Jesus you can stand justified before God. Without him, you're lost. So I make a final call. Would you receive Jesus Christ tonight as your Lord and Savior? I will lead you in a prayer. Anyone else? Okay. Now oh, this is simple. All right, I would talk with you after. Okay, you can stand there. You can go back. Okay? You can, if you want, you can stand there. All right? This is simple. The word of God says that if you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess with your mouth that God has risen.
We're going to sing a chorus in closing. <laughs>